this is Biff from Saxon, you're watching Metal Gods TV. Yow. Welcome to Metal Gods TV with Mick the Beard. Hello people, I'm here again with Ralph Robinson from Azenvel. It's been a while, well, it's a few months I think since I spoke to him last and a lot's happened. So how are you yeah. doing Ralph? All right, mate. Yeah, really good. Really good lately. A lot has changed, of course, since we last spoke. Yeah, Before I mean, getting... yeah, the, yeah. The last time I spoke to you, we were talking because you got a new drummer. Now, then the new drummer's gone. You've got in a new drummer, and you've also got in an extra guitarist, which I was surprised. Oh, 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 I almost forgot about that, not bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, how's, how's all that happened, and how's it come about? Yeah, well, you know, we sort of. Um... I think that the whole thing of getting Stell on guitar came about from like a, a joke Lenny made where he said something like, um, we, had to, we had to film some stupid fucking video for uh, TikTok and, and he was like, oh, can't I have a stunt double to, to do this bit for me? Sort of like as a joke. And then like he went silent for a good like minute and just sort of like was scratching his chin like that. And I'm like, what's he thinking? And then he goes, oh, I mean, could get Stell in. And I thought, oh, is he like, do you know when someone takes a joke too far and they keep... And it's like, it's not funny, just you know. And it, it was serious, you know. And like, uh, it was like, oh, of course, like, why not? And so I looked, um, looked across the the warehouse where we were, and it, and like, oh, it looks the part already. So what, what are we thinking? You know, he's here in the same fucking building, and he's around a lot of time, like helping us lift gear and do all the, you know, the dirty jobs no one wants to do. So we might as well get a bit of fucking glory as well, you know. Um, and that was, I think, having that little bit of downtime, uh, sort of as much downtime as, you know, as probably most bands would go on a hiatus after losing a drummer. But um, we had like maybe a month of, we, you know, we were still posting on socials every day and, and doing all that sort of stuff. So we were trying to keep active, but we had just a little bit of time to breathe and think like, kind of have that idea come to us, you know? So I think kind of losing losing a drummer and then gaining Stell was... You know, both of those things sort of had to happen. You know, we, we had to have that downtime to um, to have that revelation that, hang on, this is a good idea. It took us, like, what, fucking 20 years to figure it out, but <laughs> finally, <laughs> as a penny drop, but oh, he's not a knobhead, is he? So let's let's go with that. You know, it's working <laughs> great. Plus, um, you know, straight on the back of that, um, we, we found Ryan, who lives in the same town as us. And, like, we thought we'd gone through all the drummers in England, never mind all the drummers in Harrogate. So I don't know where he's been hiding, but he's absolutely spot on. Like, um, he, he's got the kind of, the same work ethic that we have, which is quite, is quite rare because you never expect anyone to sort of work as hard at your, your dream and your vision as, as you would. You know, and I think especially with us three being family and like you kind of being so connected to that, um, you know, the that we're doing it for Jay and that we're, we know what we're fucking doing. We've, we've got that vision. And then to have somebody join who's also is sort of sharing in that work ethic and pulling their weight to, to like, way, way above and beyond, you know. Yeah. It'd be stupid shit. Like, we'll get back from a gig, um, go back from a gig in London. Next day, he came around to sort of get get his kit set back up in, in the studio for, for rehearsal next week or whatever. And so we go down there, and he's packed all the... He's moved all the marshals from one side of the fucking warehouse right to the other, put them back in situ, got them all ready to go again. And I'm like, you did all this by yourself? Oh, well, I'm here, I thought I'd do it. And I'm like, we've just never had that, you know, that kind of like camaraderie where it's like, you know, you're all you're all sort of helping each other out and, and doing for each other. And it, it feels good, you know. So like, it's, a lot has happened for, for the better. And you can feel like the energy we're putting into it now is it feels like, we're set up to succeed now because we we all want each other to succeed. You know, there's there's no bad feeling at all. It's it's just a great fucking lineup. You know. Yeah, I mean, and you the social media has been a massive success. I mean, you started that up sort of. I don't I, I don't know if you were sort of sort of did it. Hot, wasn't really expecting it to take off. You thought I'd just do it because I've got nothing to do on tour or something. But it seems to have gone massive. Well, you see, as with anything, like you know, a lot of the stuff. That, that we do that's actually successful um there, there's great intent behind it you know there's a great right we're gonna do this because we had been doing it as much as any band you know you're on there you put your you need to tell people you're gigging so you put a poster up you know um but there was definitely that like 
that intent to say, right, we're going to post every day. We're going to increase our following. You know, we're going to we're going to get on those big stages that we know we we deserve. And this is how we're going to do it because the industry and and the the gatekeepers at you know Planet Rock Radio or people like that they, they don't want a bar of it. You know, and, and we don't care anymore because we know that we we don't need them. You know, um, any anybody like that, like your your magazines and. Uh, people review, reviewing your album or giving you airtime it's like it's a it's a nice bonus sure but we, we kind of just settled into the mindset that we're going to do this by ourselves and and at least we can control that you know we're not waiting for somebody to to come and like sort of give, give us a lucky break or something you know we just know that we, we've got to work yeah well you have got a marshall deal which is which i thought was absolutely amazing i saw it you post up for that and that was that was well, it seemed to be out of the blue, but it probably wasn't. That was a long time coming, man. We had a message off, um, you know, Steve Tanner, who was the the head of like Marshall Live Agency, um, and I think it, was, it might be like the head of Marshall Records as well. Um, he messaged us probably about three months before that came out, and it was all all sort of very vague about like if we want uh, who who's your booking agent or you know just tell us a bit more about you. So he, he wanted a phone call, so. You know, got on the phone to him, had a chat. Yeah, I can't remember what we chatted about. We must have chatted for like an hour, um, sort of getting to know each other and that. And it took about like three months after that to actually get a meeting and, and go down there. And we didn't really know what they wanted. You know, it was just like, um, at the time we thought, oh, they probably want to sign us, you know, like like Marshall Records, get get the old record deal, all your dreams are coming true, you know, and all, all that bollocks. And I'm quite glad that it's it worked out the way it did. We got a deal with the live agency, but we, we were still unsigned because um, it, it feels like there's been so many instances with this band where we've been like trying to get signed by a decent label. I mean, like the last album we put out, like World Shaker, um, you know, we were, we were on a label, but I, I feel like they did nothing more than hold us back, really. It, it was a lot of, you know, waiting, waiting for things to be done that we thought, well, if we were doing this, we'd do it 10 times quicker and we'd, we'd put more love and care into it if we were doing it ourselves because yeah. we care yeah. about it you know um so now that we've kind of got the means to do that ourselves it it, it feels like I'm, I'm glad nothing sort of came off in that respect because it's not it wasn't meant to like my you know when i visualized the, the success I, I visualized us being independent and not you know like i fucking i don't want to have a fucking boss you know i've fucking been there it's shit <laughs> and, and I think, like, why would I then finally escape that fucking bullshit working in a warehouse nine to five for some slimy fucking arsehole who wants to talk down to you to then kind of go and, and work under someone else in, in admittedly a different field, but still with that same dynamic of having someone like, come on, where's this? Where's that? Are you doing this? Like, oh, fuck off. Yeah. You know, it, it feels nice to be able to just say, oh, fuck you, we'll do it ourselves. And um, I'm realizing like, I think there was a, there was a point that we decided we we wanted to do that, and um, because with like the social media and stuff like that, like you say, um, we know that we can be kind of self sustaining and and you know not only sustain it but grow it, you know, to an insane level, and um, you know there was a point where that was just an idea in our minds. It was like okay, we can do this with no label, you know, we believe in ourselves. But now there's been sort of offers come through for certain festivals and certain gigs that we really wanted to get um that, that should be announced soon should be able to sort of say what they are where it's like ah oh, this is this is working we've just got the offer that we've been working hard for for the last you know fucking seven years yeah and and we finally got the offer and how did we do it well they came to us and and we fucking worked hard for it you know we didn't we didn't get that oh we'll get we'll get a record deal and then then they'll you know then we'll get that because it, well, now it feels like well, we did we earned it for ourselves, you know, and that feels good. Yeah. So I've noticed that a lot of bands do get stifled with record deals. I mean, because they'll say to you, "We want three albums that recorded by this date." But if you're churning them out, sometimes the quality just goes down. You need to do it when you're ready to do it, really, don't you? Yeah, it's it's kind of good. <clears throat> the process for this album, we did kind of put a little bit of a, a deadline on it because we'd been. Uh, you know, doing a lot of singles and stuff like that. And and because that stuff feels so much more beneficial for us as a band because we're, we're getting like 
you're putting out a song every other month, you, you kind of have more sustained attention than just dropping 10 at once and then it's just a flash in the pan and, you know, you, you're back to being irrelevant again after a few months. So just drip feeding them out was like, you know, the it felt like the way to go, but obviously we've got fans wanting an album. We kind of want to do one. And then this this Marshall thing, sort of, um, they, they asked us for like a two-year plan before we had this meeting. They said, oh, just, just send us through your two-year plan. And we didn't want it to look um, like we were lazy. So we just said, well, we're going to have an album recorded by December. You know, just kind of threw our hat over the wall. And we hadn't, like, none of the songs written. Like, maybe we had about four written, but they're the ones that we'd already released that are going to be on it, you know, re-recorded with a new lineup. So we've written all these songs in, you know, in the past, what, three months, you know, and it, they sound fucking great. As You know, as far as these demos go, we've been demoing them downstairs and they sound really good. So it's, we've always felt like we didn't want to do anything until we're ready to do it. But um, usually just putting a little bit of pressure on ourselves, but at least it's us putting that pressure on, you know what I mean? And like, it feels just good to be to be free, you know, and not have a have a boss that's telling you what to fucking do. Um, and yeah, like I say, that was kind of an idea in our minds that that would work, and we were just going on blind faith. But then these offers are coming through, and we're like, oh, we've got like a tangible a date and a deadline for when we're going to do this fucking thing. We're going to go play this festival that we've always wanted to play. And so now we can start like directing all our energy into that. Like, even when we're writing these songs, like, you know, Lenny's fucking jumping up and down in the room doing the, uh, the festival, uh, the, you know, fucking the festival check. <laughs> He's giving it, come on, download, let me fucking hear you. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking breakdown. Oh yeah, this is going to work. And we're visualizing that all the time, you know, playing on these big stages and, and, and that, the energy is all directing there, all four of us, just directing the energy towards, you know, the this vision that we that we have, that now feels a little bit more real. It feels less like we're completely delusional, which is nice because we felt fucking like, like oh, hang on, might we be delusional for like the past God knows how long? Like since I joined the band and, and we had these these big ideas of what we wanted to do. You know, I never fucking doubted it, but it's really nice to see it starting to come to fruition. It's like, shit, this is working. Yeah. And then you want to work harder, you know, because it's like, well, come on then. Like, um, as soon as we, we got uh, some news, I think about two weeks ago, we got some really good news of a, a festival we were going to play. And I said, right, how many days is it to the festival? So I had a look. Okay, got a couple of hundred days. Um, you know, went went straight to the gym that night and did twice as much on the treadmill as I normally do. And it felt easy, you know? And because that whole time you're visualizing running out on that stage and what energy do you want to give? Do you want to be puffing and panting and, you know, struggling? Do you want to enjoy the fucking moment when you get up there, you know? And like, it's really, it was great now to have that, um, that those concrete deadlines where we know we've got a load of dates coming up next year that we can direct our energy towards, you know, that's really good. Yeah. I saw you appear on the Hard Rock Hell poster, but you never know with Hard Rock Hell whether that's true or not. <laughs> yeah, that's that's um, we just see that as a bonus if that comes off. I mean, I don't know because I, I I can't remember what the what the crack was. Was it last year? Something uh, something went down where we're not paying bands or something like that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, that, that's been happening for a while. The rumors, but it's it's only certain certain people spreading the rumors. If you know what I mean. So I don't know. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, we just took it on at face value, and if things start to look dodgy, we'll we'll assess it then, you know. Yeah. But um, you you get the feeling that surely lightning wouldn't strike twice, you know. Yeah. Until yeah. until we know more, we just assume that it's it's all gravy, you know. So that yeah, that's a that's a good one, and and it, I, I'm not sure if stuff like that when when people like people see stuff like that coming out. Um, because we've not been doing a lot of gigs, you know, like because we've had all these lineup changes. I think this year we've done like four gigs or something, you know. Yeah. It's like fucking hell. But um, you know, this feels a lot like a new band writing their first album. Yeah. And then they get the album done and then they go out on, on tour. And so we've got a hell of a lot of stuff lined up for next year. And I don't know if, if even stuff like that um 
that hard rock hell thing kind of inspires other promoters. They, they, they all, you know, they all look at these posters, don't they? And so sort of say, oh, well, oh, they're obviously hot, so we'll get them on. And I think now that we're starting to see that happening, it's kind of just like snowballing, you know, which is good. So we, we're grateful for all that stuff. Even if it doesn't happen, you know, we're still grateful yeah. for, for the opportunity, you know. Yeah, I mean, I noticed you played a O2, I can't remember which venue it was, but you played an O2 uh, stage the other day. And you looked you look like you are really enjoying that when you played that. Mate, that was unbelievable. That was a hallmark moment because that was the, um, you know, that was the first gig with this lineup was the O2 gig, and it just sort of gave us a taste of what we could possibly achieve if we if we put the work in, you know, because we we're not as, as rehearsed as we're gonna be, you know, like and and the songs aren't as good either because we're writing these songs now, like I say, with that kind of like festival anthem mindset. Where yeah. it does pass that vibe check of getting people clapping along and shouting along and stuff like that, and so we know when we go out with a, a set of songs that are of that caliber, you got songs like louder and louder, and you come out with that, and you're winning the the crowd over straight away. And like we could see that, you know, a lot of people are unsure when we go on a support because you know there's a there's a load of um, haters online, and there's, there's we're quite easy to hate. You know, it's quite easy to look at us and say, oh, look at them all dressed up, bunch of posers. This and that. Well, it's not 1980, lads. You know, and, you know the list goes on of of insults you could throw at us. So I think it's quite nice to see. You know, when you get in a, a packed out venue like that, we don't really know which way it's going to go because, like, we've had it go the other way many times. Oh yeah, and and it, it feels great to go out and play these fucking songs that we love and have people like shouting them back and shit, and we're like fucking hell. And that was just the. I would say that was one of the best moments of being in this band was having the. You know, because every single one of us on that stage fucking deserved to be there and, and has put in the work, even in such a short space of time. Like, to get it up to that standard in just a few months, like you know, those guys nailed it. And uh, yeah, it just kind of gave us a taste of what we could what we could possibly do. You know, it's like ah, we're, we're not delusional. <laughs> you know, this can happen. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see that. I mean, I, first time I saw you guys, it was like. I can't. Remember. I think it was the Robin, and there's was, there was only about really 15 people then. And, and you came on and, and we started playing major drop, thinking, "Why are you only playing to 15 people?" You know what I mean? And then you've come on in leaps and bounds since then. So um, good on you, really. Yeah, there's a, there's a hell of a lot of that that we've had to contend with. I mean, we we played a gig. Uh, we were supporting. Was it Exciter? No, we were supporting Riot in. Um, where the fuck was it now? I thought it was like traumatic, so I've blocked out of my memory. Um, <laughs> like, no, it wasn't Denmark. It might have been, I can't remember, somewhere in Europe. And um, we went out on stage, and, and there was a band on before us, Indian Nightmare, good set of lads, played, played a great set. And there was a big crowd in there for them. We thought, oh, brilliant, you know, people are funneling in. And, we, you know, we've been on like a two, three-week tour, and, and this was in the middle of it, and every gig up to that had been great and so we think you know more of the same you know living the dream go out and it, and it seemed like there was a mass exodus like there was maybe three people there everyone else had left the venue and you kind of did get the vibe that they've been saying oh fuck these assholes we're not seeing them or oh, motorhead rip off you know <laughs> tribute back oh, fuck them you know and they've been because it's kind of like within that scene or whatever they've been enough ah oh, fucking we're not watching them because it was literally going from you know 150 people to like 12 people that were and none of those people and i mean it i've never had this in my life mate we'd finish a song and this is what it sounded like you go down and that's what it sounded like <laughs> but what the fuck? and we played well you know we were on fire on that tour because we were a couple of weeks into it and we're you know we were a really tight band at the time you know three piece just absolutely nailing it um and I, and I thought, yeah, there's something going on here. You know, like, they don't like us for whatever reason. Like, they've decided they don't like us. Yeah. And I remember at that point, just, like, turn, turning to the drummer at the time and just saying, like, just fucking play these songs, bang, 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 one after the other. And we kind of developed that over the years, you know, like, um, playing the songs just almost like an assault. Um it probably would have been similar when, when you saw us at, at the Robin. Like, we, you know, we're not the sort of band that, like, we don't even drink, like, water on stage. I mean, the drummer might have a quick sip if he's got time, but we kind of developed that um, 
streamlined performance of just right hitting with the songs they're probably not going to clap so just get in with next one <laughs> you know we don't want to have that there's probably only going to be three people in the room so um you don't want to hear crickets so just keep keep them going and keep banging on you know next 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 and it was like now we're having to kind of like dial that back because you can see that well people want to kind of just soak up the vibe and people might want to hear what you've got to say and it's you know it's great like I can say that gig at um, at the O2 was felt like the, the the kind of start of that on on a whole new level. I mean, you had like people leaning over like a balcony up there, and so you could look it up, and there's fucking tons of people leaning over cheering and that. And you think fucking hell, like you know, if anybody's earned that response, we've fucking earned it because we've we've trudged through the the uh, you know the three men and the dog golf clap sort of bullshit for years and years to finally you know, get to this point and we don't take it for granted. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, you often see bands on like O2 stages and stuff like that, um, supporting, uh, you know, supporting a band like Airborne, which is, which is like, that's always been a thing where I'd go and see Airborne at the O2 and whatever band was supporting them, I would always feel like, you know, by default, fuck's sake, this should be us. One day this is going to be us. And, you know, you want to see that band at least appreciate that they're there. And I think like, because we've been through enough bullshit, like when we get on those big stages and when we get on those big festivals, like we appreciate it. And that means that we work hard to kind of stay there to prove that we belong there. Do you know what I mean? So like um, when, when these gig offers have been coming through and, and we're, we're doing the Rocky training montage now, I just smashed an hour on treadmill this morning for, you know, doing weights as well. And then go, gonna go downstairs and work on some vocals because it's it's like we want to get out there and prove that we belong there. Otherwise, we might as well. I don't know. It just feels like you, you've been given that opportunity. A lot of people aren't. Yeah. It's gonna go. Oh, great! Now it's our time to enjoy it, and nothing else. It's like we work hard so we can enjoy it, but we've got to work hard, you know. Yeah. Because we're on a, especially with these songs that we're writing, that they're so demanding, like vocally. Um, you know, the, the way that I sing is basically 100 all the time. There's, there's no like light and shade in my vocal. It's just me screaming my head off the whole time. You know, it, it's not something to the point where it's like damaging my voice, you know, but it, it's to the point where I've got to, got to have the stamina. A lot of it's like cardio fucking fitness, you know. Yeah. You can you can feel your fucking heart rate go through the roof when you start screaming your head off. And then add to that, like running around the stage and that. <laughs> We just want to make sure that when, when we get those opportunities that we're we're sort of delivering and i think just being grateful for the opportunity in a way that i don't feel like any band is as grateful as we are for, for what we've been given that like and that'll show in the performance and the you know the fans will get a better performance because we fucking appreciate being there yeah i mean i think the world we're living in at the moment the trouble is there's too many people listen to other people's opinions instead of going and seeing seeing bands for themselves and making their own opinions but they're the same ones who moan about there's no new bands coming through for us to headline these festivals because they still want to go and see the old ones because they don't take a risk on the new ones. It's, it's just like a catch-22. Um, hold on, I think we're running out of time here. I might have to log off and log back on again, mate. All right, that's cool. I will right. see you on the other side. Okay, mate. See you in a bit. That's all.
Recording in progress. Hey, up, mate. So I thought you were going to send us another link, and then I thought oh, maybe it's not. Like we've, looks like we've got some more time left. I didn't know about. <laughs> right. Let's try again. Cool. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So I just asked them. I told that people not wanting bands and whatever. Right. There we go. So yeah, I think with your perseverance, I think you've done really well. Uh, I think you're going to go places. Um, maybe not full headlining. Who knows? You never know. It's just it's just the breaks, isn't it? It's just what what goes at the time. But what is on the horizon for you guys? I, mean, I know you said you got an album, a helping to tour. So is there anything definite you can tell us about? Well, yeah, we got the album coming out in in March. Then we got uh, we're going to be touring in April. We got I think a two week stint in the UK. Um, they're just sorting out the route in for that. Um, and then we've got some stuff. I think in July we're going to Europe. For, it might be like a month in Europe in July. Or I can't remember. It might have been like just a Benelux run. Uh, I can't remember. But um, it's seeming like next year is just filling out to be gig crazy, which is what we need really because there's, there's so much... Um, kind of pressure on us to be out there gigging because people people want to see us, you know, and and like like I say, we, we are like it feels like we're a new band doing our first album. And, you know, people are just gonna have to be patient because we're a completely new lineup, you know, and just try, trying to even the way we write songs is different now with the two guitars and stuff like that. Yeah. Um and we're kind of only just realizing what what we're able to do. I mean we're looking at old songs even and going, oh well hang on. This was written by Three idiots, but now now we've got four idiots. So what could he be doing? Could he do something different? You know, there's just a hell of a lot, even even there. That's um, and that's within the confines of the band that we need to get sorted before we say right, we'll just go and do a tour. Um, but you know, outside of the band as well, obviously we we all got we all got other responsibilities we were trying to juggle uh, to make the band work. So you know, R Ryan's right now probably cutting edges down the side of the M1. <laughs> so, so we're all we're all trying to make it work. So getting this album out of the way, we're, we're in the studio next week. So we got um, we got two weeks and a week off, and then then another week to finish up. So we should be finished by Christmas. Might have another day off, mate. You know, yeah. Christmas Day. Lucky. The gym's probably closed on Christmas, so I might have to. And then uh, yeah, just just hitting it hard next year. We're just promoting this album with a shitload of dates, which I'm really excited for. Um, so right now, we'd, we'd, like I say, we're in that Rocky training montage, you know, just kind of getting ready. And, you know, it's like you say um, about new new festival headliners and, and stuff like that and who's going to do it. Um, you see, I'm a big believer that if you've got a vision and you, you're really clear on that vision and you, you every single action you take is for that, then you can achieve it. And I, I'm visualizing every single day the day that we headlined Donington on that main stage. And you can, someone can like snip this video and just save me saying that. So in like, you know, 10 years when, when it happens, then they'll go, fucking hell, he knew he was going to do it. <laughs> but you got a belief because like, well, someone's got to fucking do it. And I'm prepared to work, you know. And I, I feel like it's not only me now that's prepared to work, but all four of us are fucking working. We all believe we can do it. You know, someone's got to do it, and it's probably going to be the people that believe they can do it, are prepared to work hard, and just chisel away at those those finer details. You know what I mean? And and just kind of accept that they're not good enough. I'm not saying we're good enough right now to do it, and that's the, that's the first step. But I know how good we might need to be. I know that that's not going to be easy. You know, but if anyone can do it, then, then we can do it. That's all it's about. I mean, you you've got to have the confidence. You've got to have the belief. Uh, the drive, and that, that's main. That's the main battle, and from then on, hopefully, it'll just go on and onwards and upwards. I mean, things have progressed since last time I spoke to you massively. So, if it keeps going that way, why not, mate? Yeah, I think you, you can see it right away that the people that the, the bands that, that, that are doing really well, and um, you know, it's like my old pal Rocky said, like it's not about how hard you can hit; it's about how hard you can get hit. And, and a lot of bands haven't been hit enough. And, you know, we've been hit enough. Like, fuck, you know, we've taken the hits. Yeah. And we do keep coming back stronger. And so we know that we're not going to be shaken off course and decide it's too hard and call it a day 
or just slow down and, and oh, just start posting one time a week on social media or oh, just, yeah, push that album back. Like, no, we, we know that we can sort of persevere through hardship. You know, the founding member of this band is dead in the ground and we keep going, you know. So if that ain't going to stop us, what the fuck will? Nothing's going to stop us. And when you, when you realise that you're gathering momentum, it's like, fuck it out. We're certainly not going to stop now. <laughs> it's like, it's the most exciting thing when you start to realise after years and years of work, ah, it is working. And, and now that we're at that point, it's like a whole new sort of avenue of opportunity has opened up because I feel like we're just working harder than ever now because all of us are sort of going, hang on. Fucking hell. Yeah. Okay. And, and and then we believe it more. And then other people start believing it more because we believe it so much. It's like, you know, if you can get other people to believe in your vision as well, then then it's a done deal. I mean, it's, it's a bonus. We, you don't need it. But uh, it feels like with, with every with every social media post, you can tell that we're, we're kind of changing people's minds about us or the people that were, were fans and are, are now super fans and they're really behind us, not only as a band, but like as people, you know, and that feels good because when, when, you, when you're this busy, you don't really have a lot of friends, but we've got a shit ton of people still cheering us on, you know, so it kind of get the, uh, when you got that many people like putting their fucking belief in you, so you don't want to let them down. No. They're putting a, a little, little poker chip down on, on your name and, it might only be in the form of a couple of Facebook comments or a couple of shares or whatever, but you want to make sure they see a return on, on that investment. You know, people that share our stuff around and fucking shout our name from the rooftops. Like, I don't want them to look stupid. Oh, this is the next big, big thing. And then we fall off and fucking give up, you know. But, you know, you want to prove those people right and you want to prove the haters wrong. And it, it's kind of that, that great thing of being like, not only are we being like, pushed forward by that hate we're now kind of being pulled upwards as well by the by the the love and support that we get so you know like social media as the the kind of utility to to get people to know about you is, is all well and good but also just just for our kind of motivation as well like it, it's good to have the fans there cheering us on like that motivates us to to keep delivering like some i, I just read a comment this morning and, and someone said Oh, you guys are helping me through a through a hard time right now. I really like seeing your videos every day, and, I, and it, it kind of motivates you, you know, because I don't have a clue what we're going to post today. Um, I, I usually get it, you know, kind of lined up in advance, but we've been so busy working on the music uh, for this new album that it's like, oh, well, we'll we'll think of something each day, and we, you know, but it kind of motivates you, like, oh, well, it's not just us doing it for just to serve a purpose. For us, you know, we're doing it because people want to see it. And even if there's only fucking one person that wants to see it, like, I don't give a fuck. It means a lot to them. So we're going to do it. You know, we're going to, we're going to deliver and we, we try and make it as engaging and interesting and, and fun and positive as possible. You know, if that's what people want, then, then we can do that, you know. And, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird with, with content at the minute because we're so, busy focusing on you know the actual band side of it um just trying to juggle it all but i think because we've got so many years of you know well we know we can do it because we've been doing content for years I mean, and for since the start of this year we've been doing it every single day so i think doing that daily and sort of always pulling something out the bag it kind of like just instills a little bit more faith in yourself that it's like oh well we'll come up with something because we always have and a lot of people ask us how we keep coming up with new content ideas or how do you do it every day or I couldn't do that. And um, I, I just feel like now at this point, we've been doing it so long that we're just, we'll, I don't know what it's going to be, mate. I just have no idea, but there'll be something. I don't know what it's going to be tonight, mate, but just keep your eye on it. And it, it'll probably be um, at least slightly interesting, yeah. if nothing else. Um, but yeah, you, you know, you just the more you do something, the better you get at it, I suppose. And, and that's kind of we're just trying to apply that same uh, the same logic we're, we're applying to the content to everything else in the band. You know, just like rehearsing, practicing new part every day, uh, going to the gym every day, um, and it's just kind of like boring, monotonous. You know, 
sitting there practicing vocal scales or running on a treadmill or just just doing pentatonic stuff on on your bass guitar like this is by no means fun it's not thrilling it's not exhilarating it's not the rock and roll dream but it, all of that is what's holding up the rock and roll dream you know yeah and um we're prepared to do that we've been doing that for you know a hell of a long time and i feel like now we're just starting to apply that to, to every single area where we might be lacking it's just applying that same work ethic to you know any problems that we're having there's there's a in a new new track born to rock and roll we did like a high harmony on the chorus um and that ended up being like the the lead line so like, oh this just sounds better um the original when i'm singing born to rock and roll was like a lot lower um and i was like fucking hell that that's hard to sing like when we put the harmony on in the studio we just put it on like in isolation uh it wasn't after singing the verse the pre-chorus and, and all the rest of it never mind in the middle of a set yeah. during a live gig you barely hear yourself so it'll be parts like that where i'm like right, i'm struggling to sing this now um but just applying that same thing that I apply in the gym when I'm struggling to like lift a weight or or whatever, it just you know, it's just repetitions in it, you know, and, and having that belief that that you can improve and all you gotta do is do the most boring thing where it kind of feels at the time like there's no improvement happening. Because it's it's just like it happens if you like if you look at like body transformations from like uh, you know, two years and you look if you look every day, there's barely any change between the days, but then of course you look at the start and the end and it's huge and i feel like just applying that same mindset to to the music side of it is uh is helpful just having that belief that okay this is hard to sing now and already it's getting a hell of a lot easier because I'm, I'm singing it in my car every morning on the way in and and every night on the way home yeah. um just chorus like 10 times we just get the repetitions and just keep doing it and now i can sing it so it's like you know, when, when when you start to to have that proof on, on that internal level where you're kind of proving to yourself that it's working. And then like I say, you're getting in the offers like externally that's proving that that it's working and other people are seeing that. It's like shit, all you have to do is just, just work really hard all the time. <laughs> like it's 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 simple, you know, it's it's not it's not easy, but it's simple. Yeah. You just if you you can make it simple if you uh if you get all the uh you know lists of what you need to fucking do and, and just make sure you're doing it um it doesn't mean it's easy though because it's like oh shit it's 11 p.m and i still haven't finished what's on that list but if you know that that's going to get you where you want to go then you'll fucking do it and i guess that's the difference because because a lot of people maybe just kind of want it they don't want it as bad as we want it and i think that's probably that's normally the deciding factor in it. I mean, people will get lucky and, and they will get those those great deals, you know, handed to them and they'll be flying high for a, a few years or whatever. But like I say, if they've not really taken any hits in order to get there, then they've not really... I, I feel like nobody's going to enjoy it as much as, as we enjoy it because we've uh, we kind of built that, that character along the way. It's like, uh, you know, if you, if you get handed... 10 grand like sure it's nice but if you earn that 10 grand it's gonna it's gonna feel sweeter in it you know and I, but we're in the fortunate position where we get to earn it no one's given us jack shit we got the marshall deal which felt like hallelujah and to be fair it felt like we fucking earned that you know um and and rather than just coming straight out of the gate and having it handed to you so i, I feel like this is the this is the lesson really for us like you know, that it's kind of good that everything's been totally fucked up for the past God knows how long and we've kind of suffered through as much bullshit as we have because at, at least we get to appreciate it when we get something decent. Yeah. You know, feels good. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up now. Actually, we've got the snowstorm back that we had earlier, so I don't know what it is. So I'm looking forward to seeing you out on tour. I hope everybody else is looking forward to seeing you out on tour. I'm sure they are. Uh, Keep posting, mate. We're looking forward. We, I look forward to seeing them. I'm sure everybody else looks forward to seeing your posts, uh, especially some of the silly ones. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping to see you on the road in April, mate. Yeah, sounds good, mate. We'll we'll see you there. I'll have to get you a bevy. 